shit, 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 boy, on P on the track. Yo, 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 what's going on, big family? It's your dog, the Ultra Melanite, coming to you live and direct once again from Charleston, South Carolina, a.k.a. the Holy City, you dig me? And today we're going to discuss the effects of music in the so-called black community, you dig? One of my favorite quotes is a quote by a dude named Confucius, and the quote goes something like this, maybe not perfect, but it's saying, if you want to tell if a nation is well governed, if it has good morals or not, Listen at the music and it shall furnish you the answer. That's a pretty deep quote if you ask me. I'll put it up on the screen and I'll repeat it one more time for y'all. If you want to tell if a nation is well governed or not, if it has good morals, just listen at its music and it shall furnish you the answer, right? Well, what happens when you listen at our music? If we go by that logic, if we're trying to tell if our nation is well governed, if we have good morals as a nation, right? What does our music say to that? How does our music make you feel? Especially if you was an outsider. My problem is I always wonder this. Why are we the only people on the planet Earth that have a music that degrades our own people? And I make the, the logic to something like this. If a so-called black person in America rode around listening at the Ku Klux Klan talking about killing us and doing the stuff there, and I'm just using this for example, if a person like me rode around listening at the, the Ku Klux Klan's music talking about killing us and destroying us, most of y'all would say I an idiot, right? Well, we do the same thing. Our woman listen at music where our men constantly degrade them. And subconsciously, it degrades them. And spiritually, you know, our woman is the spiritual center. They, re they receive a lot of this energy. So especially them, they need to be careful about the type of music that they indulge themselves in. Because subconsciously, a lot of the stuff in our music seeps into us spiritually. You dig? You got to ask yourself, why are we the only people on the planet where our entertainers and our music industry fight each other and they, they propagate destruction, death, separation of family? You know, we grew up listening to this music that teaches us not to really want one woman or, well, you know, not to want a family. They teach our woman to walk around and flaunt themselves and do whatever, and I'm not trying to bash nobody, you dig? I ain't trying to say that I never indulge in that type of music or so on and so forth. I just asking a question for us as a community. Why is it that we are the only people with that type of destructive music going on, and even to other so-called black people around the world? The so-called black people in Africa, as far as I know, their music doesn't degrade their women. Doesn't degrade themselves. Doesn't talk about killing the brothers from around the corner, you dig? We the only people on the planet with that. So it got to be some reason behind it, right? Because, you know, I feel personally that we were these, we, we are an exceptional group of people. So our enemy had to keep us down in some manner. And one of the ways to keep us down is through music. Because music speaks to one's vibration. All right, so now we can get into a little bit of the, the etymology behind the vibrations and the effects of music on the body, you dig? So you check this out, and I'll put the link in the description. Make sure, I don't know if y'all ever seen this, but there's videos out there, and there's a lot of information out there on the effects of frequencies on the human body or on anything that's solid. You know, anything that's physical, the effects of vibrations and different frequencies on physical things. So there's a video out there where a guy throws some sand on a big flat sheet and he, as he plays different vibrations. The sand moves into different shapes, tetrahedrons and dodecahedrons, octahedrons, and stuff like that. You dig? And the same thing with water. Well, you got to think, our body is made up 
of 70% water, right, or more. Our body is made up of a lot of liquid. So the music that we listen to definitely has effects on us, on our spirituality and on our physical being. And what we feel like this music does is it makes you susceptible to that form of mind control, it did, that form of conditioning where you start taking on the aspects of this music. So that's why you get people like, like Jerry Heller, people who ain't of our own persuasion that really put their money behind this kind of music. Our music shifted, you know, from being about a lot of love, you know, and, and you know, a lot of building up the community to destroying the community. And our oppressors took that and ran with it. So they, they put the money behind it and they got people hooked to it like a train, you dig? And they use certain frequencies to, to manipulate your destruction. I don't know if y'all heard about the 440 versus the 432 uh, hertz in the music. And I ain't trying to tell y'all that this is 100% true. I'm telling you mathematically, which I know all math don't mean that that's true, but mathematically this works. Because the, four plus, the, the 440 hertz which is now our standard. Our standard is a 440 hertz, right? When divided by 12, that number 440 equals out to be 36.6666666, you dig? But then when we take the 432 and we divide it by 12, we get an even nine, you dig? 12 is a sacred number. You see 12 in almost everything that we got going on in in nature, you think the one plus two equals the three is the three, six, nine and numerology and mathematics. So they switch from a 432 hertz, which four plus three equals seven plus two equals nine. They switch from that nine hertz to an eight hertz. And that simple shift could throw off the balance. Now, I know when we listen to that music, I am retarded. I, I, I deal with music myself, so I know when we listen to that music, we get bombarded with a ton of different frequencies at one time. But we're talking about the bass, the tonal bass for, or the tonal standard for our music was shifted from a 440, I mean from a 432 to a 440. And I ain't going to get too deep into that subject right now. I'd like for all of y'all at least take the time and and view it, maybe leave a comment down in the section below and tell me what you think about the shift from the 432 to the 440 hertz. You dig? All right, so since we just touched bases on a little bit more of the vibrations and the frequencies, the things that you can physically test to see if they are correct, you know, like the effects of these vibrations on water and the shapes that they, they create within the water, you would have to understand that that also happens to you physically, you dig? So now let's touch on a little bit more of the, the spiritual, mythological aspect of the whole music industry, you dig? I'm pretty sure most of y'all already familiar. Y'all pretty intelligent people. Y'all pretty much already familiar with the fact that a lot of these entertainers so-called solely sold to the devil or whatnot in order to achieve the, the heights or the level that they achieve. Now, whether you believe that or not, whether you subscribe to that or not, it's up to you, but I'm pretty sure that y'all understand that. You know, what strikes me about it is that in all of these mythologies, the devil was represented by a musician playing a flute, you dig? A musician, the power of music, you dig? In the Bible, Jubal was the musician, you dig? Quincy Jones, the devil was a musician, Day. In the Bible, Azazel was the dude who was a goat, half goat, half man, you dig? In Greek mythology, Pan was the half goat, half man that played the flute, you dig? And then moving up into Middle Ages, we had a story of the Pied Piper. And now, nah, homie, we ain't talking about R. Kelly. We talking about the mythological Pied Piper from the Middle Ages somewhere in Europe, right? So let's look at the story of the Pied Piper. What this man did was come through the town with a flute, played the harmony, and hypnotized 
the children with the harmony, you dig? And what he did was he marched the children up to the mountain and make them walk to their deaths. Hypnotized by the music, they walked to their death. Committed suicide, you dig? Well, whether the story true or not, and a lot of people, a lot of them local over there, think that the story true. But whether the story true or not, don't matter. Don't even think about that. That's what the story implies. That's important, you dig? This man was able to hypnotize the children with music. Let's correlate that to us. I see children out trying to ding that don't know their ABCs, but can sing a whole Drake song, do the dance and everything, don't miss a beat, you dig? Rhythm on point, you dig? But can't say, can't remember their ABCs, you dig? And I ain't trying to tell you that ABCs is important in that aspect. I trying to say that our music obviously has a way of hypnotizing us, especially when we're young as children. So what happens when he's, when our children listens at our music? You dig? I don't always subscribe into that whole that whole mythological aspect of things, but a lot of times mentally they make sense. And you got to you got to attribute the spiritual with the mental. You dig? Is is what you can't touch, t see, taste, smell. It's the non-physical. It's the mental. You dig? So when you look at that mythology, you got to look at it mentally, right? What is our music spiritually and mentally programming in our children? You dig? Because these people were not able to use basic subliminal messaging to take over our minds. They had to use us to take over our own minds. They promote this type of destructive music. You know, They're they the ones who got the broadcasting nation, the stations that play this music on repeat so that the children memorize it and it's stuck in their head and become stuck in their psyche. You know, they, the fact that they don't want one woman, they want all these women, they want that lifestyle that they see Lil Wayne living. They don't want to be a doctor who can really help the community. They don't want to be a warrior that protect the family, you think? Because that ain't what our music say. Remember what I said earlier. If you want to know how well a nation is governed and what kind of morals they got, listen at the music. Well, that's the same thing that's being blasted on our children 24-7 every time you turn on the radio or you turn on the TV. You dig me? So that instance... Them people like Jubal in the Bible or Pan with a fluke, you dig? Them boy people like Jerry Heller, them boy. Them boy people who chose to hypnotize a group of people using music. I know y'all heard about that infamous roundtable discussion where all of these big executives came together and devised a plan for so for, for rap music and so-called black people. I ain't telling you whether that event really happened or not. What I telling you is that a gem is a gem. And whether that event happened or not, we need to take heed. You dig what I'm saying? We're the only people on the planet with this type of destructive imaging in our music, you dig? And not only that, we know that the frequencies that it emits changes the vibrations within us. You dig? That's why we out trying fighting each other. That's why we out trying, you dig, not wanting to raise families. We sick in the head. We continuously poisoning ourselves, you dig? So like I say, take heed to some of that mythology, you dig? Do a little bit of research, do a little bit of reading. You know, he deeper than what we think he is a lot of the time. Attribute that mythological with the mental side of things. The demons in your head. You dig me? And I want a little bit of interaction from y'all guys. You dig? I want y'all to leave some comments in the section below. Everybody who watched this video, do me a favor. Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me what kind of music 
Y'all like to listen to your dig. And how does that music make you feel? Me personally, I like a little bit of mellow music. You dig? I like old school R&B. I like, you know, Curtis Mayfield, stuff like that. I like reggae music. I like that that music that give me the vibration, that give me strength and make me feel good, get uplifted. Now, I ain't trying to say I don't listen to some of the new age stuff when they come on. Because one thing about our people, especially over here, we got that rhythm, you dig? <clears throat> our rhythm a little bit different, well, a lot different than the other rhythms from the people around the world. Every group of people got their own rhythm. And I think our rhythm is more hypnotic, at least for our people, because of that drum. For us, the drum is the, the hypnotic rhythm. You dig? So I ain't trying to say I don't like some of this, this new music, man. We definitely the cream of the crop when it comes down to the humanity and, and, and what we can achieve, you dig? We just need to, to blast more of a positive message in that music because some of us ain't smart enough to not let this affect you and not let this program you, especially as children. And when we've been young, the era I come up and our parents didn't let us listen to that kind of music. We weren't allowed to listen to two live crew in the house when we were growing up. The day you had to listen to that mom and them boys were playing. I ain't trying to tell you that them boy music was straight, but even straighter than <laughs> the stuff that we've been, we ended up listening to. We getting progressively worse. You dig? So y'all make sure if y'all on this page and y'all listening at this video, go down in the comments and leave a leave a comment in the section below. Tell me what kind of music you like. Tell me what kind of vibe you get from it. And tell me what you think we need to do to break away from this, this mental slavery we got attached to the music that degrades our woman and, and promotes the separation of family and promotes us killing them boys from around the corner. You dig? Y'all boy, peace out. It's the Ultra Melanite 2019, baby.